Welcome to Monday Spotlight. It is part two of Greg Lindbergh's interview, where we finally learn what Greg is able to do. We find out how his brain is wired and whether or not carrier pigeons are a valid form of delivering bad news. What are your passions? I would say I have several passions. Uh, you know, like I've talked about, writing has always been a huge passion of mine mm -hmm. to be able to express myself in, you know, text form with words on paper or electronically. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, have always been passionate about that. And I feel like that's probably you know, at least for a while, you know, we could say is slash was, you know, the best way that I feel like I communicate with others. Although I think I have gotten a lot more confident as far as just, you know, the spoken word and, you know, public speaking and <clears throat> having had different opportunities to present and whatnot. So now you're able to ramble with this interview. <laughs> 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 darn it you caught me <laughs> hands up i'm putting my hands up <laughs> waving the white flag and everything greg raises his hands high above his head <laughs> <laughs> um but yeah in terms of other passions definitely like we've talked about sports recreation you know, not only for myself, but just being able to uh, raise awareness about different opportunities out there, especially sure. for people who are blind and visually impaired. And, you know, just knowing that I have a hand in, in raising that awareness and communicating that information um, to be able to, you know, bring people to opportunities that maybe they had never heard of were never aware of i mean that's i'm extremely passionate about that like i said would love to start a nonprofit and do more of that type of work who knows potentially even full-time down the road um and i think even kind of in terms of next gen you know I'm, I'm passionate about making a difference you know in the lives of people who are blind and visually impaired especially younger people and just the different challenges that we face in our generation. And it's, you know, I'm so proud to be part of this organization. And it's only something I hope to continue to be able to do for a long time. What is a significant date or event that significantly changed your life? Yeah, so this is one I thought about after uh, listening to Stephen's interview. And uh, for me, one that immediately comes to mind is uh, St. Patrick's Day, March 17th, 2017. And it has nothing to do with St. Patrick's Day, but that was the day that I received a job offer for my current job. Um, working for this university I work for and it, uh, it took me a long time to find you know that that next step that next job in terms of my career and so this job really allowed me to move out live on my own pay my own bills you know do my own thing so to speak <laughs> Independent. that's the I word is huge and this job has just offered so many awesome opportunities, um, you know, personally, professionally, in just so many ways. And I'll always be grateful to this university, you know, no matter how long I work for it. <laughs> <laughs> but, you know, just <clears throat> like you said, the independence, just learning and being able to live on your own and confidence that comes along with the learning process and you know it's it's one of those things that i wanted for a long time it took me longer than i thought it would to get to that point but uh fortunately i do have patience and was patient enough to eventually earn that opportunity and 
so that that day you know saying yes getting that phone call on that day and saying yes to that job offer uh was probably the best day of my life Woot woot. <laughs> if there were no barriers that means financial vision anything sky's the limit what would you be doing with your life right now uh wow <laughs> Uh, honestly, you know, the fact that I love sports so much, probably working for a sports team in some capacity, um, you know, maybe not just necessarily playing the sport, but at least working for, say, a baseball team, um, you know, maybe in the front office, getting to make decisions on players and and just the whole operations of the team and different promotions and you know everything that goes along with with sports and the whole sports world i mean that <laughs> and who knows you know maybe i'll get some type of opportunity more officially down the road you know in that realm you never know would be amazing but if not hey At least I have my podcast and, you know, kind of that whole dream of working for, say, ESPN. So you'd love <laughs> to go into sports journalism. yeah, I would say so. That would probably be a, a more specific and accurate way to put it. Dude, you should make that happen for yourself. Just saying. Hey, you never know. <laughs> Exactly. What do people not know about you? Yeah, I think one thing, uh, you know, it's in terms of my visual impairment, um, so my vision has varied over time. You know, I used to have better vision than I do have, um, was able to ride a bike, you know, uh, could read large print, even small print with really thick magnification glasses, basically. <laughs> Yeah, and... I know <laughs> about those Coke bottles. Yeah, I wore those when I was younger. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. And Mm hmm yeah. And honestly, I think it's one of those things that, you know, maybe it's just me. Maybe others have also experienced it. Just the, the lack of understanding about visual impairment and how even if you're born with a condition, it does not mean that your vision is going to be the same, you know, for your whole life, that there can be variation, that it can change, that it can... progressively decline over time um so i think a lot of people maybe you know don't realize or don't quite understand that experience that someone like myself and others go through and So are you saying there's something other than being totally blind? <laughs> you hit the nail on the head <laughs> Mm-hmm. No doubt. Yep. And, <laughs> you know, obviously there are terms like visually impaired, you know, partially sighted, totally blind, legally blind. Um, there are all these terms out there and they are necessary because, you know, there are many different degrees of visual impairment, obviously. <laughs> mm -hmm. And I think, like I was saying before, there's a lot of, you know, just... lack of understanding, lack of education about that. You know, if you say American Council of the Blind, I think the average person is going to say, oh, you know, everyone in that organization is totally blind. They have no light perception. And obviously, you know, yes, there are many who are totally blind, but the vast majority of people who are visually impaired, you know, at least have a little bit of light perception up to... you know, a fair amount, relatively speaking, a fair amount of vision, um, even if they can't drive or do things that require, you know, a really keen sense of vision. Um, so I, I think that's, as time has gone on, 
you know, going back to your question after I ramble here, <laughs> um, you know, just people don't know that in another life, so to speak, yes, I did have more vision. Yes, I was able to do, you know, a few more things. Sure, you know, we adapt, we change. Sure. I think you can do pretty much anything except drive, maybe sure. just in a different way if you're visually impaired. Yep. But yeah, I think it's that's that's a big thing that people don't quite know slash understand about me. So going back to way at the beginning of the interview when I asked um, you know what your eye condition is, how you describe it, um, I don't want to say it doesn't make sense to me, but I'm going, huh, interesting. So I've observed that you wear glasses. How does that, you know, with the amount of vision, uh, you know, I, just to be clear is I'm asking out of curiosity versus criticism, because I really want to understand, like, dude, glasses, but how you described your vision, like, right. Nah, definitely a valid question. And so I've, you know, I've worn glasses since I was three. <clears throat> and certainly glasses benefited me, you know, used to benefit me a lot more than they do now. Um, but I still do reap some benefit in terms of just seeing, you know, outlines of things and a little more clarity um, than I might have without them, you know, in terms of the vision that I do have. Mm -hmm. um, I will say it's been probably several years since I've really actually had like a refraction done and was able to see the letters up on the screen and <laughs> I kind of have all these, you know, old glasses, you know, I've had what, 20 pair of glasses over time <laughs> and, you know, I've saved a lot of them. And, and so at this point, you know, they do help some, but it's, it's, you know, as time has gone on, they really do have not helped me maybe as much as they once did basically, but they still do help a little, if that makes sense. It does. It totally does. What skill do you wish you had? Mm -mm. And what are the barriers to getting it? <laughs> uh, let's go with cooking. I, <laughs> I definitely tend to, you know, buy the the rotisserie chickens that are made up at the grocery store and just stuff you can pop in the oven or microwave or um i've gotten a little more slightly more creative uh eugene actually got me a slow cooker a couple years ago oh good and so i have used that here and there would like to use it more um but would love to be able to cook and you know at least be a little more creative and actually find recipes and use the recipes and, and really do a little more in the kitchen. Well, you know, between Eugene and I will, Eugene and I will have you hooked up. <laughs> True. You'll be able to cook anything. I can't go wrong. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you you can terms... even, even tackle grilling or barbecuing, depending on what you call it. True. Yeah. Yep. And, you know, I know many people who are totally blind and do a hell of a lot more cooking than I do. So obviously the visual aspect, you know, should not be a barrier. Maybe in some ways I've kind of let it be a barrier in terms of cooking or maybe I just have never had a huge desire to cook until recently. Um, but I know with different tools and techniques and technology, <laughs> oh yeah, the three T's, there we go with your alliteration. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I know it's definitely doable and, and something I would like to get into more. Dude, I hope you do. <laughs> Where do you see yourself in five years? Uh, I definitely hope to have a guide dog by then, <laughs> hopefully in less than five years. <laughs> uh, but in five years, uh, you know, certainly hope to be working in 
the field I'm in, um, if it's not for ESPN. <laughs> Um, you know, but just, you know, hopefully with a little more advancement in terms of, you know, managing others by then and more responsibility, uh, you know, more decision making opportunities and experiences, um, you know, in terms of uh, relationships, and, you know, romance, whatnot, you know, mm -hmm. would love to be in a relationship. I will say that's something I have not uh, given a whole lot of attention to and, you know, for various reasons and whatnot. Mm -hmm. But once again, you know, as we evolve, as time goes on, it's it's something I've, you know, tried to work on a little more of late and, and certainly hope to, you know, find that special someone and have that support person in my life and person I can really, you know, spend all that time with because there are many, many benefits to relationships as long as it's the right situation. And there in lies the crux of the matter, right there. <laughs> <laughs> no doubt. Yep. <laughs> what advice would you give your younger self? Uh... <clears throat> I would say patience. I know I've used that word several times. Um, you know, in life, you have to be patient. Things are not just going to come to you in short order. And Yes, they are. <laughs> <laughs> if you're lucky. <laughs> of course they are. This is the age of instant gratification. <laughs> You know, in our dreams. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, I think just being patient is <clears throat> something most of us, not not everyone is ever really patient. Um, but a lot of us, I think over time, learn just to be patient. And, you know, if you work for things, good things will happen to you and you will have opportunities and you know, if you work hard enough, if you try hard enough, if you wait long enough, in some cases, um, you know, your goals are absolutely attainable. And looking back, I think there have been times where, you know, I just wanted something then, you know, right away. Mm -hmm. And it's like, you know, that's not possible unless you're very, very lucky and something falls into your lap out of the sky. Mm -hmm. usually it's going to take time for whatever you want to be able to do, whatever change you want to be able to make, mm -hmm. it takes time and you just have to work at it. You have to power through and generally speaking in the end, you know, good things will happen. Dude. <laughs> and what do you really wish you understood? Uh, I know, you know, in terms of 2020, one of the challenges we faced this whole year is, you know, the concept of racial injustice <clears throat> and racism in general. And, you know, I, I always have tried to be an open-minded person and, you know, I've had roommates, friends, coworkers, uh, of all different backgrounds, ethnicities, interests, what have you. And it just, I've just never totally understood how narrow-minded some people can be in our society. I mean, I, I get the concept of, oh, you know, I don't like so-and-so because of blank. Like, okay, it's an opinion, but, you know, to be racist, to be just mean, you know, unfair to somebody because of who they are, because of their skin color, because of their belief, whatever it may be. We're all humans, you know, we should all work together. We should are, all... Are you sure about that? <laughs> because I question, I seriously question 
the person that is uh, still attempting to claim presidency at the moment. I, I question his humanness. <laughs> yeah, I know. It's, <laughs> it's a big question. <laughs> <laughs> Um, but yeah, just in general, you know, I think humanity encompasses good people, but there are a lot of just mean people out there and what possesses them to do what they do and think what they think about others is hard for me to understand. And in some ways I may never understand it. And I really wish I could get into the mind of those folks that, have those in my opinion such narrow-minded views because it's not fair and you know we only get a limited time on this thing we call planet earth <laughs> um so why not make the best of it why not respect each other and work together and do the right thing dude what <laughs> is the strangest question anyone has ever asked uh, I'm trying to think. I know, you know, I've been asked some weird stuff about my vision and what can I see and, um, you know, can I you think... Can you see my fingers in front of your face? <laughs> yeah, they're nearly touching my bleeping nose. <laughs> oh, well, you're not blind. <clears throat> I didn't say I was totally blind. <laughs> 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 yeah, I know, you know, just in general terms, I've been asked, um, you know, how do you live alone? How do you live on your own if you Dude. can't see very well? Dude. You know, literally, I've had someone ask me that, those actual words. <laughs> and, you know, it's like, how do you respond to that? I mean, there's so many things that I want to say. <laughs> Maybe some things I shouldn't say. <laughs> like? <laughs> what is wrong with you? <laughs> wow, that is so polite. <laughs> that is so polite. <laughs> but no, you know, I think it goes back to what we were talking about. Just ignorance, lack of understanding, lack of education you know, in terms of anyone with a disability, uh, <clears throat> there's obviously for a long time, there've been so many stereotypes about how someone does anything X thing. And, you know, the fact is if there's a will, there's a way. And, you know, if you're clever enough, creative enough, um, have the right support system around you, you know, that question is irrelevant because yes, you know, I can live independently. I can do things on my own without help, you know, or with some help, whether it is through technology or um, just advice hey, from <laughs> Be My Eyes, Ira. I mm -hmm. mean, it's, it's amazing what we have out there and even just five, six, seven years ago, what was not available. Uh huh. And exactly. It's it's crazy how far we've come in the last few years in terms of technology. Um, but yeah, just to kind of put a bow on that, you know, it's <clears throat> if like I keep saying, you know, if if you keep if you try hard enough and work hard enough and want to be successful in life and you know and and have independence specifically it's achievable you just mm -hmm. have to maybe work a little extra hard at it yes 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 you do is there <laughs> anyone you just can't feel empathy for uh <clears throat> that's a great question that's <laughs> makes me think a lot <laughs> <laughs> you know <clears throat> I think kind of like I was saying before I feel like in general people are humans are good people and you know sure there are people out there that just 
have done horrific things and, you know, not to get too gruesome or gory or whatnot, but have made some horrific decisions and, you know, maybe they're the bottom of the barrel type people, but in general, I, I can probably empathize and, you know, feel for people overall. What, if anything, would make you end a friendship? <clears throat> uh, I would say dishonesty. Um, you know, I feel like people should be honest with others. I mean, you know, we all have our faults. We all do things, make mistakes, maybe things that we regret having done or, or just should not have done. Um, and I think, you know, people should be honest with themselves and with others. And, you know, if you're just being so dishonest and a liar and <laughs> are claiming things maybe you've done that you've never done or have not done that you have done or, um, uh, you mm -hmm. know, it's kind of hard to respect someone like that and, and keep them as a friend. Just a little bit. What do you wish people understood about you? I know I tend to overthink things and maybe at times dwell on things more than I should. Um, but that's, you know, it's, it's just kind of how my brain is structured and it's maybe not necessarily a bad thing. I mean, at times it can be, but, you know, if someone tells me something or if I hear a piece of news or... You know, I'm, I'm always just constantly processing, thinking, you know, okay, what caused this? You know, what's, what are the repercussions or ramifications of this? Or, and that's just who I am. That's just in my nature. And <clears throat> whether, again, that's a bad thing or not, you know, is open to interpretation. But um, I would say that's something that you know, maybe is not necessarily on the surface out there, visible, so to speak, about my personality. How do you like to deliver bad news? In person, by email, or by carrier pigeon? <laughs> uh, well, carrier pigeons are pretty cool. Uh, I would say, you know, ideally in person, if obviously, you know, again, overthinking here, but <laughs> depending on how bad the news is relatively, <laughs> mm. um, you know, even in a COVID world, I still think if you can have in-person communication in some fashion, um, you know, you just can't beat that. And I think of like, you know, working from home versus working in an office and just the whole dynamics and differences there and what's lost in translation on a phone call on Zoom versus in person. You know, of course, this technology we have is great and has connected our world in so many ways going back to the community calls. But sure. it's I still think if it's bad news, it's really should be done in person. Dude. All right, last question, the catch-all question. Uh-oh. <laughs> Is there anything you would like the ACB community to know about you? Sure, yeah. So I can mention, to reiterate my podcast again, it's called Eyes Free Sports. And you can go to eyesfreesports.com to find all the episodes. It's also on Apple Podcasts, uh, The A-Lady yeah can play it for you if you just say play the eyes for you have to say the eyes free sports podcast to get her to cooperate um and uh yeah i certainly hope to do more you know with that again you know like i said before i would love to start some type of official nonprofit at some point um in the sports and rec type realm and uh, honestly, would love to see ACV have some type of sports recreation, uh, whether it's a committee, whether it's an affiliate, something official, and would love to help get something like that started. 
um, just to, again, continue to raise awareness about all these great activities and events and opportunities and how to keep, you know, blind and visually impaired people not only healthy, but just having fun playing sports. So that's that's definitely my biggest passion. As you could hear, Greg and I had a lot of great laughs. It was amazing really getting to know him. If you would like to learn more about various Next Generation members, then please click the subscribe button. Don't forget to ring the little bell, or rather the notifications all, so you don't miss a single thing. Until next time, this is Desiree A. Christian. Okay, all done. <laughs> thank god i have a frozen dinner i can just pop in the microwave at this hour <laughs> yeah you are the longest so far i got her I, now i need to say okay it should take one or two hours unless there's a hell of a lot of laughter wow. <laughs>